Hello gang, uh, Dead Spikes here. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the new season update for Destiny 2. We got a lot more news yesterday and I'm just going to try to cover it all for all of you guys. So, Season of the Worthy is the new season and that will be coming out on Tuesday in a few days. So first off, I'm going to go over the six events that they have posted on this nice little banner here. They have the Seraph Tower event, new PvE activity, beginning on March 10th, new legendary weapons and armor. We have the Trials of Osiris, new endgame PvP, returns every weekend, new seal trials, themed weapons and armor, that'll start on March 13th, and it will be every weekend. Uh, next we have the Seraph Bunker, EDZ, and Moon Legendary Lost Sectors, that will begin March 10th and go to March 24th. Next, we have Grand Master Ordeal, new Nightfall Strike difficulty, new seal, and Let's game rewards. So an ground. even harder Nightfall for the people that want some more challenge. That will be starting on April 21st. Next, we have Guardian Games, free event for all players, class competition, new legendary armors. That will start on April 21st and go until May 11th. And last but not least, on April 7th, we have Seraph Bunker IO Legendary Lost Sectors. Now, the biggest thing that I was mostly worried about is the power gains. I was curious about how the power levels are going to change when we hit the next season. Well, they have released that information to explain it a little bit. So, with each new season, you're faced with new challenges that require a bit of power acquisition to take on. In Season of the Worthy, you'll be challenged in not only in Trial of Osiris, but in Legendary Lost Sectors and Grandmaster Nightfalls. Here's a quick update from the dev team on what's changing on day one and what our plans are for a mid-season update. Dev team, we're raising the cap for gear drops. 40 points, powerful gear will now drop up to 1,000 with pinnacle drops going up to 1010. The soft cap has also been efficiently raised 50 points. Gear drops from nearly all sources will continue to be upgrades until 950 power. And powerful reward sources will not be acquired to progress. Will not be required to progress to 950. We're looking to present an element of gear possession progression available each season, as well as prepare underling systems for future updates, like the forthcoming one for legendary weapons mentioned by Luke Smith in the director's cut weapons forever section. We're also looking to make some quality of life updates in the Pinnacle Band, starting in 2.8.1, coming mid-season. We'll be upgrading some existing powerful rewards to Pinnacle Rewards. These are the weekly Crucible, Strike, and Gambit challenges, as well as the weekly Clan Engram. With this change, we want to increase the total number of Pinnacle power sources in the game, broaden pinnacle drop access as well as increase the pools of items that can drop in the pinnacle band. Slot imbalances can also infect pinnacle progression. When we say slot imbalances this could be explained at those times you have a chest piece drop from pinnacle sources a few times in a row. We've been looking at players feedback for some time and are investigating a few approaches to the problem space. We're looking to have an update on that at a later date. Until then, we hopefully we hope the additional sources will help you on your find. While we have the dev team here, we also wanted to give an update on artifact power for Trials of Osiris. With Trials just around the corner, we wanted to address the artifact power M problem as quickly as we could. As Luke said last week, our short-term fix is to disable the artifact's power bonus while in Trials and Iron, Iron Banner. Unfortunately, Season of the Worthy has already been released for certification, so we won't be able to disable the artifact's power for the first Trials weekend. We have the fix in-house to disable it and are testing it this week and hopeful, hope to deploy it on Tuesday, March 17th. We really wish we could have gotten it in before the launch week, but we also expect the first Trials weekend to be the one impacted by the artifact release. Players will have much less time to increase their artifact power, so the majority will be close to each other outside of pinnacle drops. Our long-term plan is to enable a power cap for Trials and Iron Banner, and we're investigating the work required for this. This will roll out no, er no earlier than midway through Season of the Worthy, but we don't have a firm date yet. We'll make sure to communicate it when we do.
We also plan to look at the damage curves for power enabled PvP modes to determine if any adjustments should be made, assuming we discover it's necessary. The timeline for a change is still to be determined. With both changes, we plan to provide more detailed write-ups before they go live, explaining the details of the change and the design philosophy behind why we are making these decisions. Just for clarity, I'll echo Luke's statement from last week. We're going to disable the artifact power bonus in Trials and Iron Banner until we can implement a new power cap system for those playlists. I hope you all enjoy Season of the Worthy, and may your run to the lighthouse be swift and merciless. Alright, now we have the Eververse update that we will go over for Season of the Worthy. With the turn of each season, we hope to keep players up to date on how the Eververse store is evolving. This season, we have a few concerning changes to Bright Engrams and a new path to directly purchasing some previously featured Eververse items, Bright Engrams. In Season of the Worthy, Bright Engrams will no longer be, per be available for purchase from the Eververse store as said in the February 2020 Director's Cut. We want players to know what something costs before they buy it. Bright Engrams don't live up to that principle, so we will no longer be selling them from the Eververse store. They will still appear on the free track of the season pass. This season, we are continuing to focus our efforts on direct purchasing through the Eververse store. Daily rotation of returning items. In the place of Bright Engrams, a new module will become available on the Eververse store starting in Season of the Worthy. This daily rot rotating module will feature one item from a small selection of ships, sparrows, ghosts, and finishers that were offered in previous seasons. These items will be available for purchase directly for silver at a discount from the original price. Aside from these changes, there aren't any other major shifts coming for Eververse. We'll be monitoring the conversation through launch and beyond, and we'll be sure to update you before any large changes come. Here's a quick preview of some of the upcoming items coming with Season of the Word. So there's this hunter, hunter finisher, there's a Titan finisher, a Warlock finisher. Alright, and then the final preview of patch notes. Over the last few weeks we've been giving some previews how your sandbox will be evolving in Season of the Worthy. Not just weapon tuning, but the ability to change the elemental affinity of your armor piece. This week we'll be taking a wider look at Destiny 2 Update 2.8.0, exotic armor, tuning for PvE and PvP, UI updates, bug fixes, and more. Here are some uh, balances that Bungie has made for some armor. So here's the exotic armor for the hunter, the assassin's cowl. The invisibility and healing effect will now trigger on powered melee both against combatants and guardians and finishers. The duration of the invisibil invisibility granted by the exotic increases based on the tier of the enemy defeated. Arc staff no longer activates this perk. Frost ease changed the ability regeneration so that it no longer stacks multiplicatively with other class ability energy generating perks. Capri's Sting, all smoke bombs deal 150% damage while wearing the exotic. Ophirius Rig, the maximum amount of super you can regain from this exotic with a single use of shadow shot is 50%. Young Aha Aham Kara's Spine increases the explosion radius for trip mines by 14%. For the Titan, Ashen Wake, killing an enemy with a fusion grenade while wearing this exotic now refunds grenade energy. The amount of grenade energy refunded scales based on the tier of the enemy. Anitas Wards, the shield created during a slide no longer allows chip damage through. Doomfang Pauldrons, fixed a bug where Doomfang Pauldrons would sometimes grant super energy from melee kills while in your super. Dune Marchers increase the radius of the static charge up to 20 meters, up from 12. Mark 44 stand asides reduce the delay from the start of sprinting until the overshield comes in to 0.5 seconds down from 1.25. One-eyed mass, the target marking from this exotic has been replaced with target highlighting, eliminating the ability to detect targets through walls. No longer provides a damage bonus when defeating your marked target. Restores 
the previous overshield granted by defeating your marked target, which now has a duration of 6 seconds, down from 8. Severance Enclosure. The explosion now triggers on powered melee, both against combatants and guardians, and finishers. The radius and damage of the explosion created by the exotic increases based on the tier of the enemy defeated. Warlock. Apothesis. Veil. The exotic is now guaranteed to drop with a minimum plus 16 to intellect. Controverse Hold. Reduce the damage reduction granted by this exotic to 20%, down from 40%. Sanguine Alchemy. Sanguine Alchemy has received a complete redesign. Its new perk, Blood Magic, allows the wearer to pause the countdown timer of any rift they are standing in by getting weapon kills, extending the rift's duration. That's pretty awesome. Ophidian Aspects. Now increases the lunge range of all Warlock melee attacks, even if the ability is on cooldown. Variety Brow, the buff provided by the exotic, now increases your grenade damage by 10% per stack. The buff to allies grenade recharge rates now kick in when you cast your grenade. The exotic now provides a buff text notification indicating how many allies are currently benefiting from your increased grenade recharge. Investment legendary engrams increase the number of armor sets available from world drops to 11 sets up from three That's pretty crazy. This will now include faction rally armor players who own previous Faction rally ornaments will not will now be able to apply them to these sets Several sets that were previously unavailable or extremely difficult to acquire are now available as world drops Armor stats. Prime and Grams will now reliably drop armor with higher overall stat rolls and spikier distributions. <laughs> Exotic armor will now more reliably drop with higher overall stat rolls. Legendary armor now has an improved chance to receive higher overall stat rolls. Those low rolls will still be present. Um, some user base user interface that they fixed the settings screen UI layout on console has changed to match the experience on PC allowing for future updates added the ability to change the color of the radical on consoles players can choose from seven different colors matching PC added hint text during loading screens added comma separators to the glimmer count in the loot stream no longer keeps me awake at night uh, added categories to the quest screen. Quest items will now be automatically filtered to any of the seven categories. New light, all quests, shadow keep, seasonal, playlist, exotics, the past. That's awesome. I'm pretty happy that my quests are going to be organized now. Performance. Fixed UI stuttering and frame rate drops when loading or applying mods. Improved frame rate in Gambit and Gambit Prime. Fixed frame rate issues during the Sanctified Mind encounter on the Guardian of Salvation raid. Fixed frame rate issues in the Pit of Heresy dungeon, specifically in tunnel encounters. Fixed stutter at high frame rate on PC. General improvements to perform on PC when a lot of debris is on the ground. While this is pretty lengthy, we'll have more patch notes to share with you next Tuesday around 9am PDT, an hour before Season of the Worthy begins. That'll do it for this. Um, this update will be live at around 9 a.m. PDT on Tuesday. If you guys like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Please make sure to subscribe for some more content like this. And that'll do it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Spikes out.